Well, the Green Pipeline will be one of the first dedicated CO2 pipelines to capture and transport man-made volumes of CO2. That's, that's the intent of the pipeline. During the first few years of the pipeline until the large sources of man-made become available, it will transport natural CO2, but our primary purpose is to capture the man-made sources of CO2 and then using it to produce more domestic energy via CO2 enhanced oil recovery. We're excited about the Green Pipeline because it comes right down the heart of South Louisiana's oil and gas fields on the way to Texas. So, so we're excited about that and we think it's a, a well planned out project and we're happy to be a part of it. We labeled it green because we're taking what is called a greenhouse gas out of the atmosphere and using it to perform a, a very beneficial function in terms of producing more domestic energy or oil. We start our inspection first off on the environmental side. We make sure as we put in a pipeline, we're following the, the jurisdiction of the Corps of Engineers. They give us certain guidelines and specifications we have to follow. The Corps of Engineers is a lead agency, but you also have, from a national perspective, the Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, the uh, EPA, and then each state has their uh, either Department of Environmental Quality or their uh, Commission on Environmental Quality. As you can imagine, if you're going to put a pipeline in uh, over 300 miles, you know there's going to be some impacts. And given the location, some of it's going to be uh, wetlands, some of it's going to be forested areas. So I think Denbury even knew in advance that they would have to try to avoid as much as they could, uh, minimize as much as they could, but if they couldn't, they would have to uh, mitigate in order to comply uh, with these acts. We're located in the Chafalaya Basin on the east side of the Chafalaya River. It's pretty wild. It's also occupied by the Louisiana black bear, threatened and endangered species. Denbury has taken great pains and cost to avoid the adverse impacts or minimize those adverse impacts for these threatened and endangered species here and along the entire route of the pipeline. Probably the most difficult thing to do is just to avoid any impacts, understanding uh, you know, what the requirements are and say, okay, we're just gonna avoid it. But that's probably almost impossible. And so then you say, okay, how can I minimize these impacts to the environment? And we have to be sensitive to local needs and public safety and public convenience when we build a major pipeline like this. And what's unique about this one is all the landowners you have to deal with. We have to negotiate right away uh, over every piece of pipe we put in the ground and all the government agencies we have to deal with and the local agencies to get permits to do everything. They have a rigorous uh, regulations that we have to follow and they do come out on the job and make sure that we're following the guidelines. As a pipe is manufactured, each pipe is given a barcode so we know when the pipe was manufactured or welded at, at the manufacturers. As it's brought out, it's also barcoded so we know exactly where it's laid or placed in the ground using GPS. Also when it's welded, we know who welded it, what time it was welded, and what x-ray technician looked at an x-ray that weld. So all of that is kept in a database so we can go back and review it at a later time and, and make sure that our pipe's in, in the right place. During this process, Denbury met or exceeded the requirements to mitigate, to avoid, or minimize the impact to the aquatic environment, and also to meet or exceed the requirements of all the resource agencies that had a say-so in this process. So I see it as a, as a big win-win.